Greetings, everybody. Bob Chaplin, Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries, John 8, 12. You know the deal. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This Bible study is going to be called Pity. P-I-T-Y. We're going to cover, boy, a, a lot of a lot of different things. This is going to be kind of some suggestions for those of you that uh, listen to my rants and raves. You know, I think about it. Now, please, don't think I'm puffing myself up or telling you how smart or how great I am. No, I'm an idiot. I mean, I dumped the only girl that ever loved me and cared about me. I, I left her. Yeah, I was, I'm an idiot, not a, uh, no, not smart at all. So, yep, been a fool. When I should have been serving the Lord, I was out looking for a career. And the Lord slammed those doors in my face. Well, I hope. And I pray that I'm finally doing what he wants me to do. But the point is, uh, I look at my the past, my, my life in the past, and I've been a believer almost half my life. And I'm collecting Social Security, so you know I'm not uh, young. <laughs> you know, I'm in my 60s. But now I've been a believer almost half my life. And I look back at all the schooling and education that I did, trying to get a career, and I realize I was kind of being trained for what's going on now. So, you know, when I was a real young kid, and I believed uh, middle school, um, integration was going on. They were, they decided that they had to mix the whites with the blacks in the schools and they were doing busing. And I went to a majority black school and yeah, never got beat up so much in my life. And uh, they actually threw rocks at our school bus one day and there was glass flying everywhere. Bus driver uh, almost popped a wheelie to get out of there. And uh, they actually murdered one of our kids, a middle school kid. I mean, you know, seventh, eighth, ninth grade kid. He went across, he made the mistake of going across the street into a strip, uh, what they call a strip shopping center. You know, had a small grocery store and I don't remember what else, but I remember the grocery store. He was found murdered. Yeah, in a black neighborhood, you know. But, but hey, I'm the racist. Yeah. Um, so, I learned very young. But I also lived among the you know who's. Starts. Uh, it rhymes with news. Uh, you know, like the news media. Yeah. Uh, but it starts with a J. Yeah. And uh, I had, I live in South Florida, the third largest concentration of them in the United States. New York City is number one. Well, New York City and New York State. California is second, and South Florida is third. And uh, I grew up with among them. Never met a more selfish, greedy, group in my whole life never and then listening to sunday morning sermons on television you know tv preachers about how they were the chosen people and even as a young kid i said well you know if these are the chosen god's chosen people then satan is god i mean <laughs> As a young teen, that's, you know, really. So, 
walked away from the faith. And then praise the Lord that the Lord uh, had to almost kill me to get my attention. And then I met some wonderful people in a doctor's office that witnessed to me. I told them about the uh, coming one world government. And they're like, oh yeah, that's in the Bible. I'm like, you know, rolling my eyes going, oh no, not Bible thumpers. Oh, I give up. And, uh, and they basically said, yeah, everything you've been taught is a lie. And a lady pulled out an envelope out of her purse, uh, you know, took just the envelope and wrote, they wrote down a bunch of Bible verses. And they says, you know what? Go look these up. So I was in a different city, went to the motel room and looked them all up. And praise the Lord for a Gideon Bible, King James. And I realized, that was the night I realized, wow. All those TV preachers, Billy Grahams and all the rest of them, bunch of devils. Yeah, and I realized what a fool I had been for leaving the Lord at a young age. And getting into drugs and, you know, all that other stupid stuff. And chasing trashy girls. You know, uh, what is it? What do they call you when you're uh, uh, chasing whores? They call you a whoremonger. Monger means you're seeking after something. They actually have a word called a fishmonger. You know, people that like to eat fish. Uh, they would sell fish. They call them fishmongers. But uh, yeah. So I realized going to college, I had a guy that, um, a teacher at college who absolutely detested paper money. And he says, it's going to be the death of this country. He says, every country that's ever gone to paper money, their economy has crashed, collapsed. He says, paper money is only good as long as the government is sound and eventually it collapses under its own weight and we are starting to see the that now i mean let's face it when i was a kid we had uh what they called the five and dime you know the nickel and dime store penny candy yeah i remember getting three tootsie rolls for a penny and they were big. They were big. And today we call five and dimes, we call them the dollar store. But it's not a dollar store now. Now it's a dollar and a quarter store. Yeah. Because they're just printing money. And eventually the economy collapses. But he taught us that uh, after World War I, Germany just started printing paper money to pay its debts, you know, when they got hit uh the people that were in charge of the war, World War I, decided Germany had to pay money for all the damages they did. So Germany just started printing paper, and eventually it was worthless. And that was what gave rise to uh, uh, a guy named Adolf, which I'm convinced that they financed him too, to lead Germany into ruin. Why do they hate Germany so much? Oh, real simple. Uh, well, Judah was to be supposed to be the tribe of the kings. And a lot of the royalty of Europe were German extraction. During World War I, the Tsar or King of Russia the king of Germany and the king of England were all cousins. They were all related. Yeah. So Germany was the land of Martin Luther, the Reformation, fighting against the papal power, which the papacy has been infiltrated for years. I mean, it goes back hundreds of years. The church at Rome 
hasn't been a sound solid church for centuries but germany also gave us the printing press and the first book they printed on the printing press was drum roll please the bible and you wonder why they hate germany and germany was supposed to be first in war i mean i'm sorry judo was supposed to be first in war when when the lord told them to go into the land and kill all the Canaanites. Who did he send first? Judah. Do you know it took the entire world almost to defeat Germany in two wars? Yeah. It took the United States, France, England to defeat Germany and kill our, our brothers. But the Lord's allowing it because we no longer honor the Lord Jesus Christ. But now they're just printing paper. Prices are going to keep going up. And you ain't seen nothing yet. And they're going to do the collapse on purpose so that they can usher in their solution. Problem, reaction, solution. We already got the solution. Well, they do. Not me. Um... Uh, some people think I'm part of the uh, their little group. I'm doing a really lousy job if I am. But uh, what's the mark going to be? I don't know. But I do believe that the mark is possibly a microchip because that's what I believe I was shown in 1990. I had just finished reading the Bible from cover to cover for the first time. And I had just read the Mark of the Beast. And I was like, Lord, what is the Mark of the Beast? Next morning, I go get the newspaper. And right there, um, they had a Dr. Kuhn. Uh, yeah, he was a J. Implanting a microchip into a dog. And I had a an electronics background. I went to vocational school for electronics. Um, but guess what? All the electronics manufacturers that we had in South Florida, which we had a lot, they all moved. They all went to China or wherever they went. You know, Motorola, RCA, uh, IBM, they're all gone. I mean, there was a bunch of computer jobs or electronics jobs here. But uh, also I had worked in a data a bank data center i worked for the largest bank in the southeast and that was their name southeast banks uh, the largest bank in the southeast i had over a hundred banks if i remember correctly and we had these large ibm machines the 370s they were big you know this was before ibm had their personal computers and, um, you know, when I, when I saw the chip thing, I thought, you know, that would work. That would actually work. They could actually put your information on a chip and then just have a reader, a scanner, you know, just like the barcodes in the grocery store, you know, beep, beep, you know, put your government ID on it, your banking information and your vaccine passport too. Hey, you know, it just fits. You know, I'm not telling you this is what it is, but it wouldn't surprise me because it looks like, you know. So all these people uh, have money in the bank. Well, guess what? I studied all that in college. In the crash of 29, the banks closed. And when the bank closed and it finally reopened whatever time later, if it reopened, the money was gone. Uh, where to go? I don't know. You'd have to ask the bankers. You know, gone. Did you ever see that uh, South Park clip? Uh, and I don't watch this garbage, but people send me these things. Um, I think it was 
Kyle or whatever, and his dad, and he goes to the bank. Grandma sent me a hundred dollar check. Well, you know, you got to put the money in the bank so it'll grow, and you know, blah blah blah. And he puts the money in the bank, and the banker's playing on the computer, and he goes, "Well, I just put your money and invested it in a foreign money market account, and it's gone." He's like, "What? I just deposited a hundred dollars." Well, you did, but it's gone. So, yeah. I mean, they love to show us what they're going to do. They love to. They mock us. You know? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's it's the crash of 29. Banks closed. Money's gone. Somebody told me that uh, the FDIC, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, change the rules that your money's really not insured anymore that if the the bank collapses they give you the money you had in the bank as stock in the bank you're now a stockholder a, a shareholder of a stock in this failed bank and besides the government's the one insuring it and if the government crashes there's no money to bail them out anyways so money in the bank you're a fool if you have any sums of money in the bank i mean what is worth having um how about seeds how about food how about protection i mean what are you going to do protect your family when the power goes out for or whatever and the grocery stores are empty roving bands of crazy people wanting to take everything what are you going to do but that's another subject altogether so you know in uh 19 i think it was 1934 fdr uh yeah he was a he was a you know who believe it or not he was one of our one of our first you know who presidents he signed an executive order banning private ownership of gold, gold coins, and gold bullion. Nope, you can't order, you can't own it anymore. I think it was a five-year prison sentence and a thousands and thousands of dollars fine. I mean, if if you were fined that, you could. Uh, the fine was like you could have bought 10 cars with what the fine was or or a very very small house yeah and you think they couldn't do that again let's say for example with silver and they had they had gold coins for for years i mean seriously a 20 dollar gold coin was one ounce approximately and an ounce of gold for twenty dollars and if you had oh i don't know three four hundred dollars you could have bought a brand new uh, back then like 32 30 you know in the 20s you three to four hundred dollars you could have bought a brand new model t ford yeah and my dad in the 50s early early 50s said he bought a house for eight thousand dollars so you tell me uh now houses are going for quarter half million dollars uh, it's the money has been destroyed so all these people stockpiling silver can you eat silver no and the government just passed a law it's illegal and uh, what they'll do is they'll say, well, if, you know, if somebody tries to pay you in silver and it's illegal and you turn them in, they go to jail and we'll give you, I don't know, maybe 10% or whatever, or whatever, 30% or 50%. Uh, it's like, I think with the uh, IRS, if you turn in a tax evader they give you a certain percentage of uh what they collect so if you find a company that you know small company because the big boys they don't pay taxes uh 
one of one of the rich elites said uh, taxes are for the peons and if you don't know what a peon it has nothing to do with urination peon is a Spanish word for a peasant who owns no property owns no land you know so they said taxes are for peons and they're right I knew a CPA uh, he would go to these multi-millionaires houses and do their taxes and by the time you know people that own own properties all over the world and millions of dollars of stock and what have you and by the time he got done they got a refund from the government they didn't pay taxes the government paid them oh you got a carbon credit yeah 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 we're gonna pay you subsidies or whatever So, you know, you can't eat gold, you can't eat silver, and you got to, I mean, look at all the riots we've had. I mean, can you imagine what would happen if, uh, seriously, no food in the grocery stores? Um, China purchased Smithfield Farms. They are the largest pork producer in the world. China owns them. China bought some farms in Canada and told Trudeau that we don't want you to protect our investments. We want to have our people protect our investments. So they have, and he said, yes, okay, no problem. They got, do you know that they've got actual Chinese army, Chinese soldiers guarding their farms and production facilities China in Canada in Canada seriously do we do that in the US I don't know but if there was ever a problem with food production do you think Smithfield Farms is going to be selling pork to the US or are they going to ship it to China I I I'll, I'll give you three guesses and the first two don't count but um uh, from what I understand, Ukraine supplies 25% of wheat production in the world. I mean, it's, I feel bad for uh, Ukraine and Poland because uh, every time there was a war, whether it was the French, the Germans, the Russians, uh, their lands always got invaded by the invading army and really bad. Yeah. Because you know, when you have good crop producing areas, uh, invading armies are always wanting to, you know, grab the food, right? But 25% uh, of wheat production. And let me let you know a little secret. When there's a, a conflict going on, a war or whatever, uh, you think farmers are out planting their seeds when they're under attack? No. And I'm not saying I know what's going on right now over in that part of the world because this could all be faked i don't know i'm not there i don't know but it could be used as an excuse to uh have a lack of wheat production and from what i understand russia supplies a huge amount of fertilizer to the world wouldn't be you know what good are seeds without fertilizer? Now there is um, what they, uh, well, I should mention something. There is a thing called uh, the three sisters. One, two, three sisters. They would take corn and then they would right next to underneath the corn, they would plant beans uh, so you plant the corn, let it get up to about knee high, and then you plant the beans, and then the beans will wrap themselves around the corn because they're a vine and they, you know. And then after the beans get a certain height, you know, about knee high, they plant squash. You got 
summer squash, and winter squash. Uh, winter squash is a one-time uh, harvest at the end of, before the winter. Uh, I forget what they call them. But summer squash is uh, like zucchini and uh, that yellow crookneck squash. And you get a, a multiple harvest. You know, you'll have some growing throughout the summer. But the good thing is corn is very heavy feeder as far as nitrogen is concerned. Very heavy feeder. Uses a lot of nitrogen. But guess what? The beans uh, put nitrogen from the air into the soil. So, you know, these are little tricks you're going to have to learn if you want to feed your family. And the cities is not a place to be to do all this stuff. New York City, in, I think it was in the 70s, lost power for three days. In the, I think it was in the heat of the summer. Uh, and there were riots. And we won't tell you what part of the town that was in yeah let's just say it was a it was it was dark and uh, i'm not just talking about night yeah so you know uh a president could make silver illegal and what do you got the bank closes what do you got you got nothing so Anybody wants to, they can write me. I'll tell you, oh, I know some good seed companies where they, they don't rape you on the price, or at least they didn't. I don't know. I haven't priced them recently, but they're pretty decent. But Russia supplies a huge amount of fertilizer. And, you know, this could be an excuse to uh, starve people out. And it wouldn't be a bad idea to have extra shoes and clothes and warm blankets uh you know a lot better than having money in the bank that one day the bank's going to close i you know really you think about it what are you going to do when the bank closes oh it's fdic insured yeah you're now you're the proud owner of a failed bank here's your stock so yeah I mean, I studied all this stuff in college, a lot of it. So, you know, it doesn't hurt to, uh, to be prepared. And the thing is, uh, you know, they got so many laws on the books. Somebody once wrote the Justice Department, so-called, and asked them how many laws there were. They couldn't tell you. One lawyer figured out that there's over a quarter of a million laws on the books. God only needed 10. 10 commandments. Jesus only needed two. Love the Lord, love thy neighbor. And you're not supposed to live next door to Satanists. Yeah. God only needed 10 laws. Our government's got a quarter of a million. So no matter what you do, you're a criminal. But that only applies to us, not to them. Do you know that there was a, an escaped criminal in New Jersey? And I forget exactly how old the kids were, but they were young. Uh, it was a boy and a girl, brother and sister. Sister. I think the boy was around 14, 15, 16. And the sister was about... I don't know, 12, 13, 14, 15, somewhere around. They were young teens, both of them. Convict escapes. I don't know if he was in jail, prison, halfway house. I don't know. But uh, broke into the house. Uh, you want a guy that hasn't had any for uh, however long looking at your young teen daughter? Uh, I wouldn't. So what did the boy do? He grabbed his father's rifle and he plugged the guy. The kid's a hero, right? Uh, well, not exactly. Guess what? His father went to jail. What? Yeah. 
he allowed a minor to have access to a firearm. Yeah, that's a law in Jersey. And, uh, you know, New Jersey? Yeah. Uh, replace that with a J. New Jersey. Yeah. Can you believe that? And what happens when the father goes to jail? There's no money coming in. And now he's a convicted felon. He can't even own a gun when he gets out. And however long. I don't know what the penalty was. Um, there was a... Um, there was a, I think this was in Florida. There was a young girl, probably, I don't know, five, six, something, maybe seven, I don't know. Young girl playing in her down, you know, around the block. I think it was a pit bull, went and attacked her, ripping her up. Guy grabs his pistol, goes out there and shoots the dog dead. He's a hero, right? Guess what? He went to jail too. You know why? He discharged a firearm in a residential neighborhood. And, uh, yeah. And, I, and I'm sure the news story was uh, man carelessly discharges a firearm in a residential neighborhood. Girl badly injured. Yeah. That's how that works. And he went to jail. And then what happens to uh, his house mortgage payments when he's in jail? This is what we're dealing with, people. This is exactly the kind of stuff we're dealing with. And you better believe these prosecutors, somebody like me, they weed you out with these questions. They, they, they don't want people that use their brains to think, now, wait a minute, this guy saved this girl's life from the dog. He shouldn't be going to jail. But that's not how it works. You know, it's, uh, it's terrible. Why would they even charge a guy like that? The only, the only thing that got shot was the dog. And, uh, yeah, it, you know, and it's like this top to bottom. The police are not there to protect you. They're to protect them. You know, the protect and serve. Yeah, the them, the bankers. And their cronies in politics. Yeah, there is no political solution. Absolutely zero. And the thing is, Instead of people getting on their hands and knees and repenting before the Lord? No. And I'm telling you, a lot of these people that are uh, going to ch these churches, I think, I think a lot of them are going to go to hell. I really do. And one day, the Lord will probably ask them some things, and they'll say, well, Lord, I, I didn't know that was I wasn't supposed to be doing this or supposed to do that. Or I was supposed to do this, and I didn't. And the Lord's probably going to say, well, it was in the Bible. Well, Lord, I never read the Bible. Really? So, reading the word of God that I gave you was not worth wasting your time over? Really? You know, people died to give you that Bible. People died. And it wasn't even worth your time. But you watch 28,000 hours of television. You know, you watch your favorite sports team. You know, go Colts or Seahawks or Dolphins or, you know, whatever. The Bears. Yeah. I mean, really, what, what kind of an excuse are you going to give? Really, think about it. And Lord, I bless those people that... Billy Graham told me they were the chosen people. Wait a minute. You bless those people that hate me and cursed me? Really? I, you know, Bible says that uh, if you help the enemies, 
If you hate, if you help those that hate the Lord, the Lord's wrath is upon thee. Yeah. This pre-trib rapture thing, these people are, how many people are going to lose their faith? But Lord, our Billy Graham said pre-trib rapture. Well, Billy Graham was a liar and he's going to the pit. You know, he might be going to the pit, you know, of, you know, where. I won't say definitely for sure, but that would be my good guess, you know. But I can't judge because I probably, I probably did things that Billy Graham never did that displeased the Lord. What can I tell you? So are there going to be engineered food shortages? The Bible says there'd be famine in the last days. Does it matter if it's become because the Lord doesn't send rain? Or the you-know-who's uh, not put allowing the, the, the food to get out there? Either way, your belly's empty. You know, they might use this trucking thing to as a supply chain crisis, I mean, that's possible. They might use the war in Ukraine to, you know, there's no wheat because there's a war. There's no fertilizer because of Russia. I mean, there's just the possibilities are, sometimes it seems like they're endless. I don't know. Do I have all the answers? No. No. But I'll tell you what, I've been watching these people since the late 80s. And a lot of their tricks, I know. A lot of them. I've been watching them and seeing it happen. You know, it's amazing. They get on, they, they put out television shows and cartoons and what have you. And they show you exactly what they're going to do. And then they laugh at you because they're mocking you. They think it's funny. And you know what kills me? You should try to warn people. Oh, well, I believe Billy Graham more than you. Billy Graham says, we're not going to be here. We're going to fly away any second now. The blink of an eye. Whee! These pe those people are your enemy. Even, probably, even more so than the devil's kids. Why did I say this Bible study is called pity? Well, let's take a look. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 7. All right, Deuteronomy 7, verse 1. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it and hath cast out many nations before thee the Hittites and the Girgashites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Perizzites the Parasites and the Hivites and the Jebusites seven nations greater and mightier than thou and when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee Thou shalt smite them, you shall hit them, hit them hard, and utterly destroy them. Wow, that's some pretty harsh language. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, don't make any agreements with them, nor show mercy unto them. Don't show them any mercy, zero. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter Thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. Don't marry their women. Don't let your daughters marry their men. Verse 4. For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. You know, this is the kind of stuff you'll never hear in church. Never, never, never. And they want you to say, well, you know, 
God was angry with the Canaanites back then, but now Jesus came, and now Jesus loves everybody. Oh, Jesus loves everybody. And now he wants to save the Canaanites. And whatever. Yeah. And they will hide. You wouldn't believe the number of people that have disfellowshipped me because I know what happened in Genesis 6. Yeah. The sons of God were fallen angels and they mated with the women and they had kids that were became giants with six fingers and six toes. But they want you to think, well, you know, I was just believers and unbelievers. And, you know, the kids grew up to be giants. And, you know, yeah, they had some funny fingers and, you know, toes. But, yeah. Supposedly... Marilyn Monroe had six toes. Oprah, six toes. Halle Berry, six toes. Why doesn't that surprise me? Hmm. Verse 5. But thus shall ye deal with them. This is how you're supposed to deal with them. Ye shall destroy their altars. And break down their images and cut down their groves and burn their graven images with fire. Fire. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. And the Lord hath chosen to be hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Don't marry them. Don't learn their religion. Don't have anything to do with them. Don't pity them. Don't spare them. Verse 7. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because ye were more in number than any people. For ye were the fewest of all people. Do you know what race is the smallest of all the races now? The white race. Yeah. There's like 1.5 billion Chinese, 1.4 billion. I mean, you're talking 1,400 million Chinese. India's got a, almost, well, I think it's like 800 million. Uh, Africa, yeah, you know. But uh, we are, from what I understand, we're under 10% of the world's population, the whites. Yeah, that's a curse. For ye were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And what the Lord did in the past, he'll do in the future if... If his people are obedient, and we're not, we're not obedient. All of God's curses are upon the West. Nine, know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him. Do you love him? And keep his commandments to a thousand generations. And repayeth them that hate him to their face to destroy them. He will not be slack to them that hateth him. He will repay them to his face. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I command thee this day to do them. Do you know the Bible has an entire set of laws for a justice system? Yeah. You steal, you got to repay the person you stole from four times. You don't have the money? No problem. You get sold into slavery until, you know, somebody bids on you. And, uh, you know, maybe you stole $1,000. Well, you're going to have to work until... You've done $4,000 worth of work, at least, to pay them back. Oh, well, I'm not going to do that. 
fine, no problem. The Bible says to kill them. Stone them to death. They won't listen? Kill them. Uh, there shouldn't be even be any prisons. Why are there prisons? Somebody commits a murder, and there's two or three witnesses. You put them to death before the sun goes down. No, we got to have private prisons where uh, the judges have been getting paid for uh, by the prison, private prison company to put people in prison. Do you know there was a kid? Uh, he was a teen. I don't know. High school. Had a pack of cigarettes. Police arrested him. You know, he got 11 months and I forget how many days, maybe 29, 28 days, whatever, in prison or, well, jail for a first-time offense having a pack of cigarettes. Guess what? Kid committed suicide. Why was he, why was he put in jail? Well, they found out the uh, private prison had paid the judge. If you appeared before this judge, you went to jail. Didn't matter what it was. Oh, he got caught jaywalking. Oh, you're going to jail for 30 days. Oh, he got caught throwing uh, a cigarette butt on the ground. Oh, 30 days. Private prison got paid from the state for every inmate they had. They got a set number of money. Hey, we got empty beds. We got to fill these beds up. Hey, judge, can you take care of this for us? Oh, yeah. Oh, here's a campaign contribution for you to get reelected. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, uh, when the kid committed suicide, the, the guy that was passing the money from the company to the judge, he blew the whistle on him because he felt so bad that this kid killed himself because he went to prison for 11 months and 29, 28 days for having a pack of cigarettes. I mean, seriously? First offense? Never been in trouble before? This is what we're dealing with. I mean, seriously. And uh, you, you think these people have any compassion? No. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I command thee this day to do them. We don't do that. We do everything the opposite. If the Bible says to do something, we do the opposite. If the Bible says not to do something, we do it. Wherefore it shall come to pass, if ye hearken to these judgments and keep and do them, that the Lord thy God will keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which he swear unto thy fathers, and he will love thee, and bless thee, and multiply thee. Are we blessed anymore, or are we cursed? We're cursed. He will also bless the fruit of thy womb. Children. Oh, we got to abort them. And the fruit of thy land, thy corn, and thy wine, and thine oil. Yeah. What's the opposite of blessing? The land and good crops, a curse. The increase of thy kind. What is kind? K-I-N-E. It's a fancy old English word for cattle. And the flocks of thy sheep in the land which he swear unto thy fathers to give thee. Thou shalt be blessed above all people. Weren't the western nations blessed among all the nations at one time? You know, the United States alone fed the world. Yeah. Yeah, there's st stupidity. We should have been storing away wheat for a, uh, a rainy day. Instead, we were sending it off to countries that hate our guts and want to kill us. Is that stupidity or what? Yeah. Ugh. You know, when the, uh, the communist Russian revolution of 1917, they went in Ukraine and murdered all the farmers, had some bad weather, crop failures. The communists and their government and their people were starving. So what did we do? We fed them. 
Yeah, we'll sell you wheat, no problem. And we'll give you a discount price because you're buying so much. We should have told them, starve you devils. And then guess what? Right after that happened, guess what happened? The Dust Bowl in the United States. We didn't have rain and the ground turned to dust. Look it up. The Dust Bowl, where all our wheat and all that other stuff. The Lord was sending us a message, but we're too smart for that. I mean, you got Billy Goat Graham that'll tell you the way of the Lord. Yeah. Don't listen to Chaplain Bob. He's an idiot. He thinks he knows it all. Yeah. Uh, 14. Thou shalt be blessed above all people. There shall not be male or female barren among you or among your cattle. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which thou knowest, upon thee, but will lay them on all them that hate thee. Do you know we are full of diseases in this country? Yeah. Um, let's see. Do you know what the first three uh, top diseases in the United States, the top three killers? Um, I'm not sure which one's first and second, but I'm going to give them to you. Heart disease, heart attacks, and cancer, number one and two. What's third? Medical mistakes. Believe it or not, medical mistakes is the third leading cause of death in the United States. Doctors will kill you. Yeah. There was a time in the 70s where the doctors were mad because, I don't know, the insurance went up or Medicare wasn't paying them enough or whatever. I don't remember exactly. I mean, you're talking the 70s. But it was towards the late 70s or early, early 80s. The doctors said, well, we're going to go on strike, except for the absolutely essential. You know, somebody gets a gunshot wound, yeah, we'll do that. But, but if you want to... Um, cosmetic surgery or uh, something not life-threatening, we're, we're, we're on strike. Well, after a short period of time, the deaths in the United States actually went down. And when this started to become common knowledge, the doctor said, oh, wow, we better get back to work before people figure out that going to a doctor is dangerous. Yeah. You know, and, and if you're dumb enough to trust a doctor, my grandmother was 99 years old and I forget how many months, eight or nine months. And we were getting ready to send a, a letter to the president of the United States. If you live to be 100, you get a birthday card from the president. That's been a, um, a thing for many years now. She was 99 and like eight or nine months. She died just before she hit 100. But before that, I don't remember exactly how old she was, but I asked grandma, I says, what's the secret to long life? She said, stay away from doctors. They'll fill you up with pills. Yeah. And they, t you know, <laughs> really think about it. And the Lord will take away all from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon all that hate thee. And thou shalt consume all the people which the Lord thy God shall deliver thee. Thine eye shall have no pity upon them. Remember I told you this is pity. Thine eye shall have no pity upon them. Neither shalt thou serve their gods, for they will be a snare, or a trap, for they will be a snare unto thee. Don't pity them. Why? They're satanic hybrids. Do you realize that any person that's not saved could be possessed of a devil? If we had the eyes of discernment to be able to see people that were possessed of devils, like probably Christ did, 
probably almost all of Congress would be possessed of devils. I mean, seriously. Oh, but I'm going to vote red. I'm going to vote blue. Uh, I don't think so. There is no political solution. Have no pity upon them. 17. If thou shalt say in thine heart, these nations are more than I, how can I dispossess them? Hey, these guys are smart, uh, bigger, more numbers than we are. How can we get rid of them? Thou shalt not be afraid of them, but shalt well remember what the Lord thy God did unto Pharaoh and unto all Egypt. The firstborn of Egypt died. Pharaoh's army chased Israel into the Red Sea and drowned. The Lord threw down hailstones. Anybody out in the field died. The Lord would fight the battles. But if you're dumb enough to bless those that hate Christ, well, that's up to you. You can uh, talk to the Lord about it when you meet him. Verse 19. The great temptations which thine eyes saw, and the signs and the wonders, the miracles, and the mighty hand and the stretched out arm, whereby the Lord thy God brought thee out, so shall the Lord thy God do unto all the people of whom thou art afraid. afraid. Verse 20. Moreover, the Lord thy God will send the hornet among them. Oh, the hornet? Uh, do you know over in Japan, they have a, what they call the Asian hornet? Thing is huge. Uh, from what I understand, it's like three inches long. People get stung by that, they die. They're bad. They're bad news. I don't know if those are the kind of hornets that the Lord will send upon them, but, you know, makes for a good story, right? Moreover, the Lord thy God will send the hornet among them, among the enemy, until they that are left and hide themselves from thee be destroyed. Thou shalt not be affrighted at them. Don't be scared of them. For the Lord thy God is among you, a mighty God and terrible, and the Lord thy God will put out those nations before thee by little and little. Thou mayest not consume them at once, lest the beasts of the field increase upon thee. Ooh, beasts of the field. I just did a video on that. Couldn't even post it here because, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think it's a two-legged beast. But what can I tell you? But the Lord thy God will deliver them unto thee and shall destroy them with a mighty destruction until they be destroyed. All you got to do is be faithful and obey. That's all he, the Lord asks. Nope, we don't want to do that. We want to, we want to, man, those Canaanite women, woo wee, did you see her, man? She got a bikini on. Boy, that, that, woo hoo. Man, she's something. I want I want her. Uh, ask Samson how that worked out for him. Yeah. He married he married one of them. Well, actually he married two. But uh yeah, Delilah, it didn't work out too good for him. I'm sure Delilah was beautiful. Uh, no doubt at all. Well, beautiful on the outside. Ugh. No thanks. But the Lord thy God shall deliver them unto thee and shall destroy them with a mighty destruction until they be destroyed. And he shall deliver their kings into thine hand and thou shalt destroy their name from under heaven. There shall no man be able to stand before thee until thou have destroyed them. But guess what? Ezra 9 records that they married these people, these satanic human hybrids. You wouldn't believe, I keep telling you, you wouldn't believe the number of people that have disfellowshipped from me because I know what happened in Genesis 6. 
Oh, God wants to save everybody. No, he doesn't. You th you, they want you to think that there's one God of the Old Testament that's evil and mean and, you know, and then the New Testament, well, you know, now he's a nice guy and he wants to save everybody. The Bible teaches that Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, forever. I think it's Malachi. It says, I am the Lord. I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Wake up and smell the coffee, people. Verse 25, the graven images of their gods shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein, for it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. Well, why don't you want their silver and gold? Maybe it's been dedicated to the devil. I, that's the only thing I can guess. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house. You wonder why people's houses are cursed? They bring abominations into their house. We're bringing abominations into the United States and Europe and the UK and the EU. Lest thou be a cursed thing like it, but thou shalt utterly detest it and thou shalt utterly abhor it. What does abhor mean? It means to hate. Thou shalt utterly abhor it, for it is a cursed thing. Do you know that in June 6th of 1966, 6666, the Church of Satan was founded in this country, and the IRS gave them tax exemption status? Oh, yeah. And you wonder why there are so many children kidnapped every year. If they're not sex slaves, they're probably satanic sacrifices. There were so many of them, they don't even put them on the milk cartons anymore. It's horrible. And, and these so-called churches tolerate this filth. All I know is they're lucky I'm not in charge. Horrible. In Proverbs 19.17, listen to this. He that hath pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord. And that which he hath given will he repay him again. Remember the story of the rich man and Lazarus? Lazarus was poor. Did the rich man give him anything? Not really. You know, eh, piece of bread fell off my table. It's in the dirt. I don't want it. You know? And then after they're done with dinner, they let Lazarus, whatever, pick up the crumbs off the, the dirt or the floor. And you wonder why the rich man went to hell? Yeah. You want to put your money in the bank? Or do you want to lend your money to the poor uh, Lord? Where the Lord's going to repay you? You know, that, there's a whole Bible study you could do on treasures in heaven. So... You know, the churches that uh, teach tolerance of the evil, wicked things, you know, it's no wonder they don't want you to read the Old Testament. I mean, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel. I mean, I did um, play, I have a playlist on all, all those books. It's depressing to me to read Jeremiah. I mean, absolutely depressing. Let's take a look. Jeremiah 21, 7. And afterward saith the Lord, I will deliver Zedekiah, king of Judah, and his servants and the people, and such as are left in this city from the pestilence. All right, so they're going to have pestilence from the sword and from the famine. So everybody that's left that don't die from the disease that don't die from the war and don't die from the lack of food 
I'm going to deliver them into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Uh, so any of you survivors, you're going to be taken into captivity. You're going to be their slaves for the Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylon. And into the hand of their enemies and into the hand of those that seek their life. And he, and he shall smite them with the edge of the sword. Nebuchadnezzar is going to smite them with the edge of the sword. He shall not spare them, neither have pity nor have mercy. Nebuchadnezzar's, the Bible says that uh, Babylon was a golden cup in the, hand, hand of the, uh, in the Lord's hand. A golden cup. He was, the Lord said Nebuchadnezzar was uh, his servant. And he went in and destroyed. I think it's in Daniel chapter 4. Nebuchadnezzar actually was responsible for one chapter in the Bible. Think about it. Ezekiel 5.11 Wherefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, surely because thou hast defiled my sanctuary, they defile the Lord's house with all thy detestable things and with all thine abominations. Therefore will I diminish thee. What does diminish it means mean? It means to make you small. Therefore I will diminish thee, neither shall mine eye spare, neither will I have any pity. You want to mock me? You want to defile my sanctuary? I'm not going to have any pity on you, and I'm not going to spare you. And people want you to think, oh, well, that was the Old Testament God. Eh, don't, you know. Let me tell you something, people. You don't take a letter written to one person and apply it to everybody. You don't do that. And that's what these so-called pastors do. They'll take a letter written to one person and apply it to everybody. If I wrote a letter to my family and said, oh, I'm having a birthday party. I want all of you invited. That letter is to my family. You think I got food for a million people that show up and say, well, Bob said, hey, it's my birthday party. Everybody's invited. Come on over. No. But to listen to these pastors, the you know, they don't differentiate. Whew. Ezekiel 7, 4 and Ezekiel 7, 9. And mine eye shall not spare thee. Who's speaking here? The Lord. Neither will I have pity, but I will recompense thy ways upon thee and thine abominations in the midst of thee, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. And mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. I will recompense thee according to thy ways and thine abominations that are in the midst of thee, and ye shall know that I am the Lord that smiteth. How does the Lord do things? Disease, war, famine. When you have famine, when you don't have food, people have diseases common. And what happens if you have a war? Farmers don't plant their crops when, there's, when they're under attack. You can't. So, Ezekiel 8, 18. Therefore, ah, will I also deal in fury. Mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity, and though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. Well, the Lord will hear you, but he's not going to listen. You know, Shoo, you think the United States and Europe, you think we're under God's judgment? Oh yeah, absolutely. And eventually, among the remnant anyways, in Joel 2.18, then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. The remnant. You know, I wonder 
in some of these churches, if there's a hundred people, are there even a remnant, a, ten, a tenth, a tithe, 10 people out of 100 really truly saved? I wonder. I really wonder. I wonder how many girls, by the time they graduate from high school, are even virgins. I wonder. I mean, you wonder. Wow. I wonder. And you wonder how many pastors will tell you, well, you know, that's the Old Testament. It doesn't apply today. And even if it does apply today, it doesn't apply to you because you're not Israel. You're not the Jew. That doesn't apply to you. Oh, really? You know, when you look up all the curses, I did a, a Bible study on the blessings and the curses. Right from, I think, uh, I think it was from Deuteronomy. I'm not sure. Ezekiel or, I mean, Exodus or Deuteronomy or Numbers. I forget which. You know, the Bible's a big book. It's three quarters of a million words. And to re try to remember everything is kind of hard. But um Bible says if you obey me, you get blessings. And if you don't, you get the curse. Well, we're in the curse phase. Big time curse phase. And all you can do now is, you know, Jesus warned there would be wars and rumors of war, that there would be famines and diseases and everything that's evil that the Lord pronounces is coming upon our people. People don't want to hear this stuff. But what can I tell you? I try to warn them anyways. So, matter of fact, there's even people who say that if you're obedient to the Lord, that you're trying to earn your salvation. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. What commandments? The two commandments. Love the Lord, love thy neighbor. On these two hang all the law and the prophets. Do you love the Lord? When the Lord brings all these judgments upon the land, the majority of people are going to be destroyed. The majority. And there's just so few warning the flock. Just so few. It's, it's just, what can I tell you? And whatever you do, don't follow me. Unless I'm leading you to Jesus, don't you dare follow me. Because I will let you down. Like I've let other people down. And myself. I've let myself down. So, all right, well, I'm done ranting and ravings. All I know is they're setting us up for failure. Everything the Bible says to do, we don't. You know, it says Abraham was wealthy. Gold, silver, land, and cattle. Do we have any gold? Not really. Do we have any silver? We, we had actually silver coins when I was a kid. And a, a silver dime would buy two large candy bars. Two Snicker bars or whatever. Mars or Hershey's or whatever. Not anymore. Now it'd be like four dollars and something probably. Land. If you have land, you can grow food, right? Or grass for your livestock. Or cattle. If you got cattle, you got meat, you got milk. Oh wait, you live in the city. It's not zoned for agriculture. You can't have cattle. And when the Great Reset comes, oh well you're going you're not going to own any property you know you'll own nothing and be happy or else yeah 
But Bill Gates is not going to have a problem owning land. Trust me, he's not going to have, he's not, the Great Reset's not going to apply to him. So, yeah, keep that in mind. Matter of fact, I got a picture of Bill with uh, Rabbi Schneerson. Perhaps you've heard of the Noahide Laws. They were named in his honor. Well, they were created in his honor. Matter of fact, there's some that's waiting for him to rise from the grave. Rabbi Schneerson. They said he kept the law perfectly. And he's their Messiah. Uh, yeah, their Messiah. Not mine. No, no, no. Yeah, so... Uh, stay close to Jesus, people. Right, you know, we're going to be looking upon these days as the good old days. People think uh, things are bad now. They haven't seen anything yet. Nothing. And I got two Bible studies everybody should listen to. Matthew 24 Revealed and uh, Revelation 12 Revealed. And that will give you a good idea of what's going on. Of course, the wheat and the tares wouldn't be bad either. It's all on my playlist on YouTube. I don't even think I can put this on YouTube. I, I think I cover too many things. You know, it's sad. I've got a talking code so that I could avoid the censors. So, alrighty. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' precious name, amen.